again, thank you everybody for, for hopping on another uh, Twitter spaces with, with Avalanche. Um, I'm Kyle, really excited to have you all. And we have some really, really special guests here with us today. So we got three members of the Particle team, and, uh, and I'm going to let them kind of do some intros and tell you a little bit about Particle. So um, why don't we hop into it? And uh, Luik, you are the co-founder. Why don't we start out with you and why don't you uh, give us a little introduction to yourself? Uh, thank you very much for having me first. Um, yeah, I'm one of the co-founders. I come from the analog world, as uh, I guess we, we call it. I used to uh, work in a, in a gallery world at, in, in, in Switzerland, and then I worked at Sotheby's in London, and then I ended up at Christie's, uh, where I ended up uh, running the post-war and contemporary department uh, in, here in New York, and um, that's where we, we held the big uh, marquee sales uh, every year and sold uh, some of the most uh, important artworks uh, made by artists, basically. And um, I worked there at Christie's for seven years. I've been involved with different uh, collections, different collectors. I've, I've, through, through, the, through my work, I've advised some of the top collectors in the world and help them build their collection, find some of the of the greatest wor works around the world and travel a lot uh, for that. And um, and then uh, at some point when I was at Christie's, I started creating my own uh, auctions. So we had the regular auctions that uh, happened twice a year. And then I would add one, uh, one, one a year, which was only my uh, my selections of, of artists and, and at some point um, the auctions that I used to create became actually bigger uh, than the sold for I don't know eight hundred million dollars like close to eight hundred million dollars worth work of art in in, in one night um, and uh, then. I also worked on the uh, the sale of the Da Vinci. I got the Da Vinci for for sale, and that um, I had the previous world record for. Sorry, to just talk about money. It's a bit boring, but the previous world record for uh, an artwork sold at auction, which was a Picasso that had sold for 180 million dollars, and then um, I, I I brought this Da Vinci at, at Christie's, and um, it was estimated 100 to 150 million dollars. And it sold for four hundred and fifty million dollars, so that was the highest sale ever, and uh, should be for a while. Although I, I think this record is going to be beat at some point. Um, and then a year later, I I, I left, and I founded my uh, my own uh, app uh, auction app, which is called Fair Warning. Uh, it's an app where we, when we we are on, we sell uh, one painting or one sculpture a week. Um, and on it, and it's a it's a live auction app. So you just you just bid and swipe when you want to bid on it. On it was a, it's every day on every Sunday at uh, at five p.m. usually. But right now I put it a bit on hold because uh, I've uh, joined forces with my uh, co partners at, at at Particle, and um, I've been uh, you know oh, and actually. It's true that when I was, uh, you know, working at Fair Warning, I, I got into the NFT space uh, pretty early because I um, we did a, an NFT with Urs Fischer. Uh, Urs Fischer is one of the most important uh, artists in, in in our world, I would say, and he is very he he's very computer based, and uh, and when he discovered the NFT uh, potential, he, he he did this project which we call Chaos. Actually, we have a drop as we speak that I'm monitoring. At the same time, we have a drop on Maker's Place, um, and so I got, I got, um, I, I, I got familiarized because of Worse actually, who pushed me to look at NFTs uh, pretty, pretty early on, and and also through all this experience, I, 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 I met, um, you know, became friends with people and with uh, different top collectors uh, in, in the sphere. And so I would say that my expertise in art is pretty good, and my expertise in uh, uh, NFT is still uh, to be uh, can still get better. But thankfully, I have the partners uh, 
of particle uh, that are on this team that like know their their stuff in this domain. I, I hope that's a good enough introduction to try to give you every, uh, everything. <laughs> it was not true. So. Yeah. Absolutely. That was a great introduction. Thank you for giving us the background because I think it really helps frame everything that we're going to be talking about in terms of the approach from the art world. So so thank you for that background. Um, I want to go to another one of your co-founders, Shingo, if you want to give a quick intro on yourself as well. Yeah. And, and thank you again for, for having us here. Uh, I would say I'm definitely the blockchain guy and the, the crypto guy. And I've been in the blockchain space since, uh, I guess, late 2015, early 20, 2016. Um, and, you know, I come from sort of computer science background. And when I discovered crypto for the first time, I sort of immediately fell in love with it and, and realized its potential and realized that, you know, that there's so much potential both for uh, technological progress, but also social progress and social and social good. And I wanted to you know be a part of that and help that happen. Uh, my first uh, company that we started in the crypto space um, uh, was Ethos and Ethos was uh, was where our goal was to create a financial ecosystem that's open, safe, and fair for everybody. We created this wallet and this backend, uh, backend platform, uh, really sort of ahead of its time, uh, abstracting different blockchain platforms into a unified API layer. And then we uh, we met Voyager pretty early on as well. And then um, and with Voyager, we we realized that there was a lot of synergy. You know, we brought a lot of crypto expertise. They brought a lot of uh, of sort of financial expertise, and we put the two. Uh, companies together in order to form, uh, you know, the modern day Voyager that everybody sort of knows and loves and Voyager's, you know, also a participant in, um, in Particle as well. Um, so, uh, so, you know, and uh, through, through that whole experience, we met some of the other co-founders also, uh, Philip uh, and, and Oscar, who are also uh, two, two of the other co-founders and Adam. Um, and, uh, and we all sort of came together around this idea of bringing all of our expertise together to be able to bridge the fine art world with the blockchain world. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. We're excited to have you on and, uh, and what you've brought to the, the project so far. So let's go to our third special guest, uh, Harold, uh, the managing director of particle. You want to give a quick intro on yourself? Sure. Thanks for, thanks for having us. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Harold. I'm, um, I'm an operator essentially by background. So I, I started my career at Rocket Internet where um, basically I was replicating their playbook of taking ventures from idea to launch in uh, in 90 days. Um, and Rocket's ethos really was um, anybody can have an idea, but really execution is key. And I think that's what's kind of relevant here is um, I'm sure we're not the first to, um, to, to think that NFT technology could be applied to democratizing ownership of, of fine art. Uh, but actually conceptualizing and realizing uh, realizing it is a whole different uh, ball game. So, uh, yeah, I was, I was brought in by the founding team to run the project as CEO, which, uh, like at the beginning of any project, is a bit uh, being a jack of all trades. <laughs> so uh, that's me. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I'm really excited to have you, and uh, thanks for, for joining us. And then we also have uh, Jay, the VP of Marketing from Ava Labs. Jay, you want to give a quick intro? Yeah, thanks, Kyle. Uh, on my side, I'm VP of Marketing at Ava Labs, currently building the layer one that is Avalanche. Um, I've been in the space professionally since 2015, started on the ad agency side for a few years, and then switched over to being a full operator on the marketing front. Um, most recently was on a project called Fluidity. We got acquired by Consensus last year, um, or I guess two years ago, I think at this point. And then um, right after that, actually joined Avalabs to, to figure out how best to, to launch Avalanche and then ensure that the ecosystem could grow as, as it has today and hopefully beyond as well. So excited to be here. Awesome. Thanks, Jay. Um, all right. Well, we're excited to have our, our special guest here today. So we're going to hop into it. And I, this is a, kind of a question for, uh, I guess, for the, the Particle team. You know, why don't you uh, give us a little bit of background on what Particle is, how it was put together, um, what the Particle Foundation is, and how that whole ecosystem works together to bring this idea to life. Yeah. Uh, so this idea really came around when we, you know, looking at the art market and collecting art has really been historically uh, a privilege of a select few people. 
And this collector community has sort of shaped and transformed the, the course of art history. And, uh, and while sort of many people were able to sort of peripherally enjoy art uh, through museums, it was really difficult for, for individuals to penetrate into the, into the fine art market. And we thought that, that blockchain technology and NFTs would, were a fantastic vehicle for us to change the way that people own, collect, experience, and ultimately enjoy art. And we want to, uh, we want to let people through these NFTs participate directly, you know, at the highest level of the, of the art market and, uh, and acquire some of the most iconic masterpieces and put them in the hands of, of a community and let people uh, jo uh, participate in the ownership and enjoyment of art, uh, which has been so sort of historically uh, concentrated in, in such a small uh, group of people and want to make it open to everybody. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's, uh, that's something that I think is, is a great goal to strive for. And I think this project is really um, executing well on that. Um, Harold or, or Loic, I don't know if there's anything else you, either of you wanted to add there. Yeah, I think, I, I think it's, you know, as, a, as a, always an art lover, as a kid, I would say that I always looked at, of course, I would go to museums, and, and but I would also look at art auction catalogs and the auctions that were coming. And I, I didn't have a penny, and I was always wondering. I, I, I saw like Basquiat coming at auction. I was like, wow, I really love this artist. I wish I could, you know, own a piece of it or be part of the action. And it just f seemed like it was just always impossible and still impossible to own a Basquiat because a Basquiat uh, or a Banksy, you know, they, uh, true original Banksies are worth fortunes and kept having this idea that like uh, rummaging in my head that like, it, is, what, is there a way that we can you know make the collecting experience more accessible are there are there other kids like me uh in the world that also want to be part of it and, and be part of this whole experience like we know that you know music has been democratized Almost everything has been democratized, but art is the last bastion that hasn't been democratized, and uh, and this is really how this this idea came. And when you know we I saw the emergence of blockchain, and I and I, and 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 especially NFT technology and and shift in the ownership narrative, uh, you know I reached out to 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 um, actually Harold's brother Philippe Etan, who's one of my best friends growing up, who's also a founder of of Particle. And who had the most experience with, you know, with 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 blockchain and 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 crypto in general, and he coalesced this whole this whole team, including Shingo, uh, and the other partners, and and that's where you know, and Adam Levine, who I see on this call, and Oscar from uh, from Uber, and that's where we really, uh, you know, put our our head together. Okay, this is this is the idea, uh, this is the technology that we have uh, at our disposal, and you know, and and. And how do we how do we make this happen? So uh, it took a lot of a lot of thinking, and it's it, you know I, I had a suspicion you know talking to people in, in the street and and and, and friends and uh, all of, you know from different walks of life that everybody has an interest in art, in in art, but nobody has ways of engaging directly with it. So I had a suspicion there would be uh, demand for that, and 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 and, and we're happy to see that you know even before the launch we 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 had so much people asking and requesting requesting particles yeah yeah this is definitely a, a good way that kind of bring that democratization um to this market that's like you said is, is one of the the ones that can is coming in last in terms of uh bringing it to the people and i think blockchain technology is really going to facilitate that and i wanted to kind of dive in a little bit in terms of the, the partnership between particle and avalanche and how that came to be and um, wanted to kind of ask the group here, you know, the genesis of, of the partnership and, and why you chose Avalanche to work with it, to bring this to life and, and, and um, you know, how you see that partnership playing out so far. Yeah. And I think there are really two main reasons why, why we wanted to do this. One was for the user experience. We really wanted to create a great, uh, and positive user experience and avalanche is one of the you know one of the blockchains is really placing the user first and placing the user forward um, and another one was because the avalanche team really shared our vision and uh, and really shared uh, the mission and really believed in what we were doing and believe and believed you know in this for the long haul and wanted to uh, wanted to be a part of that and it just made a lot of sense for us to for us to partner with 
with Avalanche. Uh, I'll let you jump in here, Harold. Yeah, um, you know, we 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 obviously um, approached and also recorded by um, by a few other uh, other blockchains and and really the commitment of Avalanche, um, like Shingo said, the the alignment that they had on our on our vision, our mission, um, and really actually the, the the caliber of of the team was really um, kind of put forward during the the you know all all the the discussions that that we had during that during that time frame and it, it you know it really gave us the confidence that um that as well as the user experience um aspect of the of the avalanche chain uh, you know give us the confidence to say you know this is this is where we want to where we want to um, build this project on and then obviously there are you know the 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 other aspects of the of the avalanche chain like the fat you know the 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 speed of the transactions its efficiency and low fees and then another um very important um very important part of the chain that's important to to all the uh, the particle team and and and, and um, you know specifically as well to to loic is um is the the green aspect right um we didn't want we you know we wanted to build on um on a platform that that you know we thought was was future proof um and and i th- i think correct me if i'm wrong right but the you know the 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 um, the eco friendliness of the chain the fact that you guys the you know the whole network i think uses about 12 uh that has the carbon footprint of about 12 us households uh over the course of a year and i think that was pre upgrade you know these kind of things and and the work that you guys are doing to 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 push that forward um is something that we held in high regard and did as well definitely take play a part in our decision making there yeah absolutely i think the sustainability part of it is is really important and makes a lot of sense for this project um and jay i'll kick it over to you and kind of from the flip side of this why this makes so much sense for for avalabs to help build this out and for to you know launch this on the avalanche blockchain um you know how does the avalanche chain benefit a project like this yeah, I think the the main component that's being hit here is a seamless user experience. And of course, Avalanche is providing that or enabling that on the protocol level, but there's also another part, which is the application. So it's really important in early stages like this to make sure that innovators like the group at Particle, other creators um, and other types of applications have everything they need to make sure that they're able to achieve the vision that they need to achieve. Because I think the comparison is, I remember back 2017, 2016, there are a few projects that were were also trying to fractionalize art. Um, But unfortunately, I think in addition to speed and scalability as being a problem, there is also a huge issue on infrastructure. So imagine if you were to participate in a sale uh, like the Banksy sale, and the way you had to participate was using a whitelist, uh, whitelisted um, address and actually going direct with no easy to use front end. That, that's just obviously taking away a lot of the addressable market. And so I think that's why the first go at fractionalizing art and also um, just any most of the things in, in kind of the 2016, 2017 era hit a little bit of a roadblock simply because the infrastructure was not in place. So now we're at a different time. And I think it's really critical for, for people with experience. I think all of us on, on, on the panel, um, we've been in crypto, I guess, <laughs> aside from Louis, but he seems to be pretty, pretty well-versed at this point, where we know all of the, the pros and cons of this technology. So we need to make sure that we're avoiding all the mistakes and, and pushing forward the, the actual solutions that work. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's definitely the right time to do this and, and it's the, the right platform to do so as well. So, um, yeah, thanks for the insight there. So I wanted to kind of uh, move, move forward here and get into the, the details of this project for sure and wanted to kind of kick it over to the Particle team and um, kind of first off, why why Banksy? Why this piece and, and how was this piece chosen and how did it come about uh, as the, f- the first one chosen for this collection? So... So we were, you know, we were, as, as I said before, we were discussing the project and putting our, our heads together and like, and we actually just started to, um, you know, raise money to, 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 to buy, acquire the first, the first painting. We we're just not even in that process yet. And, and suddenly I, I opened the, the Christie's, the Sotheby's catalog and I'm like, oh shit, there's the perfect work, but it's coming like in a, in a few weeks. We, I don't know if we're going to have our. We're gonna put our stuff, our shit together, basically to uh, 
to get it because uh, first of all, Banksy is an incredible artist. Um, it's an artist that I've been, um, you know, working in auction house. I, I've I've seen his emergence uh, in the street. I was working at, at Sotheby's in London. And he was a huge figure back then, although it was still localized, only the English people knew about him. And then I was part of the team that 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 witnessed, uh, you know, when his first works started to come at auction and they all started to come through Sotheby's where I was working. And I was I was cataloging them and I was, inv- you know, I, I was involved with with some of the of those sales. And I immediately realized that Banksy was not just a, a flash in the pan. He was an artist that was was actually, uh, you know, a, re- a revolutionary and, and, and completely changing the name of the game, a complete outsider, but who understood uh, the, the inside, the art world and the art market and all the, the, the dynamics very well, but also had something extremely new to say. And, and retrospectively, we can almost, you know, say that, you know, he invented meme uh cultures is like he was his his message is so immediate and being immediate immediacy in art is very important it's actually the most difficult thing to do in art is to be simple like as soon as you're not good you overcomplicate stuff and banksy is an artist who who simplifies and goes straight to the point and 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 therefore probably invented the you know the meme before it, they got invented and and he is an artist who is getting more and more relevant with time. Most artists, a lot of artists lose relevancy with time. Banksy keeps getting more relevant as time moves forward. And so Banksy was always uh, an artist that I, I liked and I liked following him. Uh, I liked following his, his ascension through, through the, the art world and through the world. And... Uh, it, it was always an artist that I, I, I think you know you should you, you would want in your collection, and therefore when and then suddenly this this work came up at auction and it was the, the perfect the perfect work. It was a it was the best of the uh, of the Love Is in the Air series, the best I've ever seen in my entire career. I've never seen one that is so crisp, so perfect, you know, hand hand painted. Um, and back then the estimate was. Was four to six million dollars, but I immediately told my 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 partners that I, I would expect this to sell for way way more than that. So we had to, um, you know, we had to come up uh, quickly with a strategy to to acquire this work, and also, um, you know, symbolic symbol symbolistically, it, it's very similar to our approach. What we do, we are not trying to, you know, turn the art world and the art market on its head. We are, we are, we are, we, this is like a bit of a peaceful uh, disruption, I would say. And, and symbolically, this work was really uh, a, a, an image of what, what we're trying to do. We're, we're, we're coming here we're, with flowers. Uh, we may ruffle a few feathers in the, in, uh, you know, amongst the establishment, um, but, we, but, but we're really there to give people uh, a voice and uh, an engagement in this in this world. So th- this is this work was like almost like sent to from God to us to 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 launch uh, the the particle project and the particle collection, the particle foundation, everything. Yeah, it just it just seems like the perfect piece for this, both uh, from the messaging standpoint and and also to to really excite like a, a wide audience, you know, to get to get informed about this um this whole like particle process and and the the launch here so yeah it's really exciting that this is the first one to come out with and i wanted to kind of uh talk a little bit more about the utility of of these nfts and you know if if you guys can share a little bit more of how the particleization works and you know what what's going to be the utility and kind of the ownership aspect of these nfts and and what that is going to kind of entail for the future as well yeah it's a great question um and what our vision for these NFTs is we want these to sort of be a, like a ticket into the a next generation metaverse museum. You know, this, this uh, NFT represents ownership, a digital, a digital ownership in the, in the, in the piece, but it also represents your ticket into the art world, both physically, you know, when we partner with museums or when we uh, create a, a metaverse or virtual presence, but also your ticket into being able to participate in the nonprofit, being able to participate in the art market, being able to 
be a part of this, be a part of a world that just hasn't been accessible in the past. And that that's really our vision is we want to we want to create an experience for people. We want people to relate to the art, to feel like they're an owner in the art. And that's why we really talk about owning, collecting and experiencing because it's, it's the full uh, it's it's the full experience of of everything put together that creates that unique experience that people can have with art and these NFTs represent you know, your ability to to do that. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's uh that's really awesome because I think there's so much that's going to come with it in the future and uh, and there's going to be all these things that develop off of this new form of of ownership of art. Um, and I guess for for um you know any of you. What is what is this kind of uh, process of NFTs and and you know the access to the global art market? What is what does this mean for like kind of the future of, of art history and the way that we get to interact with with art that was previously inaccessible? So, I I think that there's two things that this particular offers basically, and I always I always say that when you, uh, when, you when you when you go to a museum, I always give this example, but. You know, Ken Griffin uh, owns a lot of uh, a big collection of art, and and he he, he loans it uh, all to the uh, Institution of Contemporary Art in Chicago, for instance. I'm just giving you an example, but for instance, he has this famous Andy Warhol Marlin, uh, a painting that is worth like 250 million dollars, and this this pa- this painting is an attraction for everyone. as a big crowd always in front looking at this painting, and you know that the people who go um, really enjoy it, but you know that like when Ken comes to the museums, he he enjoys it that that much more. Uh, enjoyment of art is, is 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 it's weird. It's almost chemical. It's something that is it's it's you you get part of it through through uh, through seeing it in a close encounter, and you get part of it through through owning. It's a bit it's a bit like uh, they're they're they always been you know. Uh, together, those two, and um, so that's that's the idea that we're doing with with, with particle. We're allowing, um, you know, ownership of, of of the works, and we're also allowing. We're creating through the particle foundation because the works are donated forever to the particle foundation, um, a place where those works can be seen, um, a physical space. Of course, there's going to be a metaverse counterpart, but a physical space in. Uh, where the work can can be seen, uh, and where everyone can have, everyone who has a particle can experience the same, a bit the same type of enjoyment that Ken Griffin is getting, uh, which is pretty much the full-on um, experience of art. Or and and that's that's the whole idea is that uh, particle, the particle foundation is going to be really uh, built for the for the enjoyment of the particle owners. And you know, and, and, and moving forward, it's it's really the idea that the community, by being active um, on particle, on the primary, of course, on the secondary, they're literally going to power particle, the, part, the, the 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 particle foundation, to 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 be able to acquire more work for the community, and literally compete with those uh, those big collectors who usually are the are the only ones who can acquire and this art and have this perfect experience for themselves. So um, the idea here is that, you know, we're going to, we're going to add to the rostrum and we're going to, we're going to compete at a very high level for some of the the best masterpieces in the world and really ultimately create one of the best collections in the world that belongs uh, and is to be enjoyed by the community. So, you know, it's a pretty, uh, Big vision, but uh, but I I, I, I I do think it's uh, technology will will allow um, art to be owned by the people and, and enjoyed by the people in a complete complete way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. you know, the, the, um, just putting that 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 you know, just putting the the foundation that um, the particle foundation that Loic um, just mentioned forward a little a little further. You know, um, it is an integral part of this whole. Of this whole project specifically because you can't replace the experience of viewing this phys- you know the physical masterpiece itself uh, like Louis said this one it's like it's it, it's perfect uh, it's 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 the best um, love is in the air from the series and you really get to experience it in its entirety 
uh, physically and get it get that experience enhanced through ownership. So this foundation that holds and preserves and maintains the physical works of art um, really to perpetuity is, is kind of a key piece of the puzzle. And, um, you know, while others in the past, I think you guys might have might have heard of uh, uh, the burnt, burnt Banksy. So this this group that bought a bought a Banksy. Uh, took a picture of it, tokenized it essentially, and then physically burnt the the burnt the physical copy of it. You know, for us that was kind of a blasphemous move uh, and and completely unethical and and really unnecessary. So we found this um, creative approach which allowed both, you know, providing a wider community digital ownership of the work, but also allowing the physical work of art to remain intact and actually be, um, you know toward internationally for the benefit of of the wider community yeah i think the um the whole idea of being able to experience it in person as well is definitely such a key part to this and i think this is a great segue to kind of talk about the event you know in uh, at art basel in miami um when the banksy was actually displayed and um wanted to kind of hear a little bit about that event and how it went and how it was received by the people that got to see it in person and then how that's going to parlay into the NFT owners being able to experience this in person um, it, going into the future. Yeah, I'll let Harold talk a little bit more about the event specifically, but I wanted to mention one thing about about that event, which was that we wanted people to sort of have a little taste of what we were trying to build with the nonprofit, you know, with the Particle Foundation. We really want people to feel they are part of the community and part of this this bigger movement, and the NFTs really represent your your, your ticket into that. You know, both uh, and we and we want to give the the community a voice in how the 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 nonprofit you know is is operated too so you know we want people to we we what we're trying to dis, uh, display to people through that through that event was how our how our vision with the, with the nonprofit sort of connects with our vision of creating this uh, this next generation museum and uh, one of the greatest collections in the world. Yeah. So yeah. So I mean, the the event was was amazing. You know, we had people from, uh, well, first of all, walks of life, but also you know from the traditional art world. We had um, you know art collectors with people from the um, uh, you know and NFT uh, digital artists, NFT collectors. Everyone kind of came together, got to experience the the ICA uh, gallery as well as um, as uh, you know love is in the air work. Um, you know when showing up and. Um, I think you know what what we're trying to do with um, the, the with the foundation is is really include like have an an, exp an engaging and interactive experience when you come and see the work that's synonymous with what we're trying to do with um, the art market and, and 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 art discourse generally kind of including more people into it and making it a more engaging experience than it may have been up to now. Um, so you know Av Avalanche actually. Uh, you know, provided these these kind of um, paper paper flower bouquets that 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 we gave out exclusively, and and you know, kind of representing the the bouquet on the on the painting. But it's kind of something that we're gonna push even more forward at our at our um, New York City pop up, which is uh, which is uh, opening up on Saturday, um, this Saturday on the 18th. So we have a, a kind of a launch event there, and it's it's gonna be open for six weeks, and um, you know, we're gonna take that. I, that kind of concept of engagement and interactivity one step further. Um, so I won't say anything more than that, but it's going to be, uh, you know, if, if anyone is in, is in New York, um, show up, it's going to be, um, it's going to be fun and you're going to be able to experience kind of, you're going to be able to experience art in uh, a new way that I think um, you wouldn't have had the, you know, the possibility to do so in, in any other, um, in any other forum than a, museum or a, a gallery let's say in this in this uh, in this instance that was built that is built um for the community specifically yeah awesome yeah where can uh where can people that are in new york uh find out more information about this event um i think uh if you, if you go to the to collect uh collect particle on on twitter where we um, we're posting uh tomorrow the the invite and uh and uh i think you guys avalanche as well you you guys will be there too, so I think you'll be, you'll be posting the the invite out. For sure, yeah, definitely. Um, it's going to come out on Twitter with all the information tomorrow. Uh, Jay, yeah. from your perspective, uh, like I guess 
coming from someone that's not part of the particle team and going to this event and getting to experience seeing it in person what what was that like in terms of kind of being a an attendee and, and experiencing um the the art in person yeah i think what's what's maybe understated in what the particle team is doing is actually moving forward with with this idea and making it come to real life so as as we're all kind of discussing on what the implications might be simply put we don't really know how people are going to react to this, which is honestly what excites me the most. So I, I know I'm not really part of the application team by any means, but have been on plenty of calls and, and actually have watched um, basically on the sidelines, probably like most of the listeners here and really trying to wrap my head around, okay, well, what does this mean? So there might be a metaverse direction. That's fascinating to me as, as kind of that industry picks up a little bit more and a lot of um, legitimate players are also entering the space. Um, also as, as someone with a creative background, what does this mean from a create uh, from a creator's perspective? How does quote unquote democratizing art uh, impact everyone's life on a day to day basis? So I think with the in person events, that's kind of one of the first pieces of the puzzle. And so I think more and more it's going to be interesting to see people's reactions, um, good and bad for what it's worth. Uh, maybe the team can then use that feedback to improve on the overall experience and how best to position it. Um, I think simply put a lot of the things that that are going on um, in, in this, in this concept is, is again, new, but also really complex. So how do you communicate that to the end user? So I think with the upcoming New York activation, especially um, as it's compared to the Miami scene, I think the, the spaces are very similar, but also, also different in, in its own way. So I think it'll be interesting to see how, the, the crowds react um, in, in the context of Art Basel, which was a few weeks ago, but also in the context of just a, a normal week in New York, but perhaps in in, in a, an area that's more um, in, in tune with the creative scene than not. So I think that's what I'm most excited for. And I think it, it'll just take time to, to really have a, a better view as to which direction this is all going. Yeah. We, we clearly want to have fun. And this is art is about enjoyment it's about about fun about discussion and and we you know we had a lot of fun on the party a lot of people came we had even guys like people and and he brought all of, it, all of his friends and a lot of different artists and and collectors and old school collectors and young people and tech people and and nft people it was it was great to have this whole mix and that's something that i have to say um is extremely refreshing, you know, coming from the old, the, the art world, and I'm still in it, um, and will probably remain in it, uh, you know, but, um, but, and because I was formed by it, but I, 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 um, you know, the discussions are, are really stay within a certain realm, and, and it's, it's not very, you know, you're not very open to, although the art, art by definition asks you to open your mind. It opens it to a certain extent. Um, I think there's an energy in, in in the crypto world, and there's a an interest in, in in new ideas, in new tech, and also in new artistic ideas. And so there's just a lot of vivacity and 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 um, and, and, and passion about it. And and we see it on our on our Discord channel. I, I never really used Discord before, and I, I I go quite a lot now to see what's going on. And the the art talk is is really incredible and you see that you know people are, people know what they're talking about they know the artists they they you know everybody knows about banksy and I'm, and I'm sure that you know the next acquisition they will be as knowledgeable and, and it's just it's just so much passion and interest and 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 and, and hopefully you know we can keep th those those discussions going either on on, on different channels but in and in real but also also have fun. It doesn't have to be always uh, very stuffy. I was just at a at a Met uh, gala, which was which you know Met for the art acquisition of the Met, which was great, and they do an, an unbelievable job, and they have to do it to to raise money to for their acquisitions. But um, you know, it, it was could it could have been a bit more uh, funky, I would say, and. and we, we, you know, we are, we are here. We are very serious about what we are doing. Um, we want to deliver only the best art, and I, 
want to be extremely careful and diligent uh, and professional on how uh, I, I choose the art for the particle uh, found, foundation. But at the same time, it doesn't mean that we cannot, you know, have fun uh, and, and enjoy the ride. Yeah, absolutely. There's definitely always a way to, to have fun with it and uh, bring a kind of a new vibe to, to this market. Um, so we're going to um, have a couple uh, closing remarks at the end, and we'll talk about uh, the whitelist that, that dropped today. But I wanted to um, just quickly to a couple questions that we got from fans, uh, both on Twitter and within Discord. Um, and one of the or a couple of the questions kind of center around, you know, from from ownership, what is what does the secondary market look like? And also, what what role are these NFT owners going to play in deciding future art pieces that are going to get purchased or deciding where this gets displayed? Are there any other, you know, revenue streams that come from galleries paying to display it um wanted to see if you could uh elaborate a little bit on on kind of what's next for for those that um end up owning a piece of this art yeah i'm i'll, I'll let Sh shingo is it, it can can um is, is more kind of eloquent than i am uh, on explaining this but just on the you know there's definitely going to be a governance play or, or you know get nft the particle owners, particle NFT owners, will have a voice in 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 the direction of the of the foundation. But on the on the point of kind of choosing what what art to um to you know to to, to purchase to add to the collection. Right now, I think it would be um, a shame, you know, not to leverage Loic's expertise, his eye um, in, in in picking these artworks. Right, he's Loic is. Uh, is, is humble so I, I know he gave a, a good intro of himself but he he is kind of the number one uh arguably the number one person in in, in art taste maker in art he's built some of the world's um uh helped build some of the world's greatest collections he sold the top five um most expensive um artworks on auction including the the, the da vinci uh, for 450 million so you know i think we're you know the community is kind of lucky to have Loic um, lend us his his eye and his expertise. So on on that, I think um, you know we we we'd be we'd be foolish not not to leverage it. But that doesn't mean that there aren't uh, the the you know the the, the community's voice is not going to be heard in the um, in the governance of this of this foundation. Sh Shingo, I'll, I'll I'll let you take on from here. Yeah, and we're we're working on a, a document that will sort of put all of this into writing and. Uh, and which we're really excited to share with the community uh, uh, soon. But uh, it's always been a part of the vision to allow the community to participate in, in the nonprofit. And I think a really good way of, of understanding Particle, what we're trying to do, you know, there, there are several platforms out there that will securitize art and they'll let you invest in art. But in our view, it sort of commoditizes it in a way and, and it removes a lot of the experience of the art. You know, oftentimes the art will just go into a free port somewhere where nobody can enjoy it. And we want, we want the ownership component to be there alongside the enjoyment component and the, and the full experiential part of, of an art piece. Like, like what Luig said, the ownership of art enhances the enjoyment of it. And that, uh, you know, there's, there's certain uh, qualitative parts of, of art that you can participate in through through a nonprofit that just aren't possible, and being able to compete with the top collectors and the top uh, bidders in the world, you know, it's it's just not possible for for many individuals, or even for even for many of the founders individually. It's it's re it's a really difficult market to, to penetrate, and that's really what we're what we're trying to achieve here. So that what that means is that people will be able to uh, participate in the way that the foundation is run, the way and participate in the way and where the foundation. You know, goes to or, and where the uh, the foundation you know, displays the art and where um, both physically and digitally, and so that's always been a really core component of of it, and you know we'll be solidifying a lot of that uh, in the in the coming weeks. Uh, but and we'll it'll be really exciting to share our vision for that with with the community. Awesome, and yeah. and, and one 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 thing that you know I I yeah I want to say that, that, you know we're gonna. You know, we're going to be chasing um, some of the best works in the world, and that's something that I, you know, I've during my whole career, I, I've never, never compromised on 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 quality. I think that, like, you know, uh, with art, you 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 just can't. You, when you, you 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 either go for the best or you don't. If it's a B minus, 
you you let it go if it's a B plus you let it go if it's an A minus you let it go you really go for the for the A plus and um, and of course you know defining what quality is and what is an A plus is is the the hardest job but um, this is this is something that you know and when collectors come to you they usually say you know advise me to to buy the best of the best um and sometimes the best of the best can be a sleeper it can be it can be cheaper it can be cheaper also it doesn't have to be the most expensive work um but i but, but i always thought that you know i've done that for so for so long and 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 the idea here is really to in a way to decentralize my my eye and ex my experience uh but still continue to to build a great collection um for the community and and it, it it's it's going to be fun if we you know as a community we, we you know and as particle we can suddenly snatch at auction some of the works from some of the most powerful and some of the biggest collectors in the world they know that they'll have to to count uh, with us in the mix basically and and you know again it's a bit down the line but you know, having this idea of having a museum that that can really compete with some of the best museum foundations, that can really compete with the best foundations or collections in the world. Um, that's an incredible uh, idea. For the moment, it's still an idea, but uh, I, I think it's totally realizable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's definitely exciting to to bring the foundation into that place to be able to to compete in those auctions and find the best of the best art. So really exciting to see how that comes to life in the future. So we are going to um, wrap it up here with, with closing remarks. Uh, but before we, uh, and after we do that, we're going to be selecting uh, the winner. Uh, one person who's been um, listening in the whole time will randomly select to win one of these NFTs. And so we'll, we'll drop the, uh, the name here at the end. But before we get to the closing remarks, um, Harold, do you want to kind of touch on the whitelist process and what went live with that today actually i think you just dropped off oh yep oh can you hear me yep you good all good yeah yeah so we just um we just uh released the uh whitelist applications um what that is is um you know just a process for us to make the allocation of these ten thousand nfts as, as fair and uh yeah as fair as possible um we have kind of on uh, unprecedented um, interest in uh, in the project so um, you know not everyone is going to be able to get their hands uh, on a, on a particle and so we're just trying to make this kind of a fair a fair process so anybody can come to the website can um, you know just connect their metamask wallet give us their email and then request a um, uh, you know request that is their desired amount of particles that they'd like to purchase um you know they'll be minting at uh, the equivalent of a thousand five hundred dollars and you'll you know you'll be able to buy them with uh with avax and um and with rap teeth as well um and you know this process this application process lasts um about four weeks and on on the 10th of of uh of january we'll be you know going going to that list and 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 approving applications uh, so you know, if you if you have requested five particles, you may get all five, but you may just get one, um, and that you, that you can purchase. Um, and you know, the way that you can you know kind of increase your chances of getting that allocation, getting your your whitelist application um, approved or having a successful one, is um, you know we have we have some whitelist spot giveaways. Um, we're also doing some airdrops of, of, of some of the particles. So if you if you join our Discord, you know you, you'll you'll get in the loop on all on all these activities. But really, the main way is just being active on our on our on our on our communities. If you if if you're an active contributor, if you kind of contribute to the conversation around art, around Banksy, around the painting itself, um, you know, give suggestions of where the project could go. Um, just basically be involved. Um, you know, we have mods, we're looking at Discord, we're looking at Twitter, Telegram as well. Um, and, and uh, you know, your, 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 your contribution is not un unnoticed. And, um, you know, everyone is going to be notified of, of their successful applications that week of January 10th. Awesome. Yeah, so if everybody wants to uh, learn more about this, you can head over to ParticleCollection.com. All the information is there to... Um, sign up for the, the whitelist and, and put in that application. And then 
um, it's it's a four week process, so you have uh, some time to go ahead and jump in there and do that. So thanks for breaking that down. Um, let's uh, let's wrap it up here. It's been a really really awesome conversation. Um, really excited to bring this partnership to life. Any uh, closing remarks um, first, Jay, anything that you wanted to close out with? Yeah, for, from the closing side, I think the, the main thing I want to leave everybody listening off with is is just this idea of, of trying th- trying new things effectively. So with Particle being one of the, the, the handful of projects that are early to the scene, it's, it's really a, great to see see that happen but also need the support of the community and, and just the feedback in general so if this is something that's of interest to you hop in their discord make sure to ask the right questions um, i know their community managers are really helpful with trying to direct people with those questions and i think on the avalanche side um, speaking on behalf of the avalabs team we're just one small component of the avalanche community so from that we're really trying to push the boundaries of of just creators and 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 creative apps on chain effectively. So if there's any idea that you have where you're thinking to yourself, oh, well, maybe we need to, to figure out what the best layer one is to deploy on, or, or maybe there's other nuanced questions, we're more than happy to help. We've been in the space for some time. And so we're, we've made those mistakes for you effectively. So my DMs are open. Kyle, he's, he's moderating. He's on the official account, but he, his DMs are open too. Feel free to reach out to us. We're happy to help and, and see if we can make something happen just like we did with the Particle guys. Awesome. Thanks, Jay. Um, from the Particle team, any uh, closing remarks before we do the, the final giveaway? Um, well, n- nothing from me. Just, uh, you know, very happy to, to, to have spoken to you guys. Um, and, you know, we, once again, our on uh on the particle side dms are open and every you know any questions you have we'll we'll make sure to address in uh, in due time bear with us um you know we're still a small team with a quite a large and and expanding community right now so we're in the process of staffing up and and being able to to tend to everybody in in a, in a timely manner um but it was a pleasure uh, pleasure speaking with you both yeah, yeah. And i just want to say you know thank you to the community too for believing in this in this vision you know we're we're really trying to do something quite ambitious here and we we think that uh a lot of it'll bring art to so many more people you know and it'll bring uh adoption of of this technology and the art and blending all these different worlds together and it's going to be something you know quite powerful and uh and we're grateful that uh, that so many people are you know engaged and uh and bought into to what we're trying to do Yeah, same here. I I'm I want to thank everyone for being here. I I, I think I'm I'm just so surprised to see not surprised, but because I know I know it and I knew it that there's so many people that that love art and I did this. I went into this world because of my passion for art and um, and it's just and but often in our world we don't have Discord, so we don't. It's you know we we can we can uh, discuss with people that we, we, we know and it's always sometimes the same people and it's just so great to see such a, a bigger community uh, sharing the same passion and um, and I, I, I knew it existed I just didn't realize it had the same, that amplitude and it's, I don't know, it, it, it makes me very happy uh, that I'm not the only art uh, freak in the world basically. Not at all. Thank That's Thank you for being part of uh, <laughs> also being some yeah. art passionate. Yeah, absolutely. Well, once again, Luik, Shingo, Harold, thank you so much for joining us. Jay, thanks for hopping on. And uh, for everybody else, thank you so much for listening. Uh, again, you can go to ParticleCollection.com or uh, Collect Particle on Twitter. Join their Discord. Get involved. Um, give us feedback. Really excited for this for this uh, wireless process and the launch to happen in January. Uh, The final thing is we uh, mentioned that we were going to be doing a giveaway for people that have been um, listening to the, to the, um, to the spaces for a long time. So um, let me see if I can pick someone here that's been on uh, since early on. Uh, All right. At Astro Jim, Jimmy at Astro underscore Jim. I saw you here super early on and uh, we randomly selected you to be the winner. So if you could DM the avalanche Twitter account, I'll, I'll get you all set up with, with the drop for this. So thank you for joining us. Thanks everybody else for hopping on.
We're really excited about this. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter and get more information about this as it comes out. And uh, thank you again to our guests. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.